Huawei's dual breakthrough, the final solution to the chip conundrum. Why can't the U.S. cripple China's chip industry? The U.S. spent $280 billion blockading the industry for three years, and in response, Huawei counterpunched with two game-changing aces that are directly shattering the global chip blockade network. Does that sound like a fantasy? In just two weeks, Huawei first publicly released its patent for a lithography machine's magnetic levitation bomb, and then unveiled its next-generation AI chip. This move completely shredded the U.S. politicians. Blockade dream. It's important to remember that the U.S. Commerce Department had previously boasted it would completely strip Huawei of its high-end chip capabilities, only to be thoroughly humiliated. What exactly is the deep secret hidden within this patent, dubbed the magnetic levitation bomb, by the industry? Let's break it down in simple terms. 1. The lithography breakthrough. Magnetic Levitation versus the Old Train Track First, let's understand the core problem. Why are lithography machines so difficult to build? The main bottleneck is the wafer stage, the component that carries and moves the silicon wafer. It must precisely dance with the laser. Any deviation, no matter how tiny, turns the chip into scrap. Previously, Companies like the Netherlands' ASML and Japan's Canon relied on mechanical guide rails for stage movement. To put it bluntly, this system is like an old green train running on iron tracks, metal grinds against metal, causing wear and tear, and even a speck of dust on the rail can cause a wobble. More critically, the error in this mechanical structure accumulates. After a hundred movements, you have to recalibrate a hundred times. The positioning accuracy maxes out at 0.25 nanometers, and that's an ideal number. In real production, frequent shutdowns for calibration result in frustratingly low efficiency. Huawei's magnetic levitation technology immediately throws this old train system into the trash. Instead of mechanical contact, it uses electromagnetic force to make the stage float, just like a maglev train leaving the tracks. This results in zero friction and zero wear. Without mechanical friction, the stage moves faster and more stably. The old system could only move a few dozen times per minute. The new one easily doubles that. More critically, precision. What is 0.25 nanometers? It's about 1 40th, 000 th the diameter of a human hair. Huawei is aiming for 0.1 nanometers. This is the equivalent of having an embroidery needle stitch patterns onto a hair without shaking and with perfect accuracy. Don't underestimate this 0.15 nanometer improvement. For chip manufacturing, it means that advanced processes below 7 nanometers finally have a domestic core component to rely on. The wafer stage technology monopoly, previously held by Europe and the US, has been punched open by Huawei truly fixing the most painful weakness in China's domestic lithography machine efforts. 2. The AI Chip Breakthrough, Performance, Safety, and Ecosystem Supremacy Huawei's other game-changing ace, the next-generation AI chip, has directly disrupted the intelligent driving and computing power fields, with a level of subversion even more astonishing than the lithography patent. Let's translate the 40% performance improvement over the previous generation. Into plain language. In the most critical task for intelligent driving, real-time road decision-making, the previous generation chip needed one second to process 100 frames of high-definition road images and identify 50 obstacles. This new chip can complete that task in 0.6 seconds, while simultaneously calculating the optimal braking distance and avoidance path. Don't underestimate that 0.4 second difference. On a highway at 120 km per hour, it provides a 13 meter safety buffer, enough to avoid a fatal rear end collision. Even more shocking are its real world results. As of the end of October 2025, the Huawei ADS 3.0 system equipped with this chip has helped car owners across 31 provinces and cities in China avoid 1.81 million collisions. This includes 620,000 low-speed scrapes in city driving, 480,000 emergency high-speed braking events, and even 13,000 sudden pedestrian crossings. In these scenarios, the average human reaction time is 0.8 seconds, but the AI chip, 
thanks to its ultra-fast computing power, eliminates the accident signs in the bud. This is more than a simple performance boost. It's a technological life insurance policy for drivers. When compared against US giant NVIDIA's flagship A100 chip, Huawei's breakthrough becomes even more significant. The A100 is a must-have for global AI companies, but since the US intensified its blockade, it's become nearly impossible for Chinese companies to acquire, even with approval through the US Commerce Department's entity list review. The delivery cycle has stretched from three to six months, and prices have been inflated to 1.8 times the original cost. Huawei's new chip, however, doesn't need to heed the US's demands. Its computing power rivals 85% of the A100, and in specialized scenarios like intelligent driving, it even surpasses it. Crucially, the training cost is directly slashed to one quarter. In short, training an intelligent driving model used to cost 4 million using the A100. Now, Huawei's chip only requires 1 million. This is a cost-saving miracle for car manufacturers. This chip's confidence stems from Huawei's self-developed neural network architecture. Previously, most Chinese chips had to be compatible with NVIDIA's CUDA ecosystem, essentially giving NVIDIA control. Huawei built its own computing power ecosystem, which not only runs its own Harmony OS smart cockpit system but also seamlessly adapts to the intelligent driving algorithms of companies like Baidu and Xpeng. This easy-to-use, affordable, and non-bottlenecked chip was immediately snapped up by automakers like BYD and ArcFox with orders surpassing 100,000 units in just half a month. Shocking, isn't it? The US sought to strangle China's smart car industry through a chip blockade, but Huawei used an indigenous chip to pry open the choking hand, and ironically, cut the cost as well. Hidden behind this is the counterattack logic of China's technology companies. You monopolize the technology, and I will build technology better suited for local scenarios. You raise the price and I will use independent R&D to drive down the cost. This AI chip is not just a piece of hardware, it's a pass for China's intelligent vehicle industry to break free from US computing dependence. The narrative that China can only make low to mid-range chips completely collapses in its presence. 3. The Showdown, How Huawei Mastered the Counterattack Now, let's explore three key questions. How did Huawei achieve these two feats? Why did Huawei succeed where Europe and the US failed despite pouring in vast sums of money? How much US dependency can this breakthrough eliminate for China? First, looking at the magnetic levitation bomb aimed at lithography, its prowess is even more striking when compared to the technology of the Netherlands ASML. ASML's EUV lithography machine is the lifeline of global chip giants. Its wafer stage alone integrates guide rails from THK. Netherlands, and servo motors from Yaskawa, Japan. Technology supplied by over 5,000 vendors achieves a positioning accuracy of 0.25 nanometers. Huawei, with a single patent, bypasses this technological monopoly of Europe, the US, and Japan. The magnetic levitation drive directly eradicates the mechanical friction problem at the root. Now, consider the US strategy. To choke off China's access to lithography machines, they pressured ASML not to sell EUV equipment to China, while simultaneously injecting $52.7 billion into their own chip manufacturing efforts. The result? In 2025, even Trump complained, The money is gone, but the factories are nowhere to be seen. In contrast, since being placed on the entity list in 2019, Huawei quietly invested hundreds of billions in R&D and its Hubble investment arm backed over a hundred domestic suppliers. From reflective mirrors to light source components, they meticulously assembled the patent puzzle piece by piece, leading to today's magnetic levitation breakthrough. Shocking? The US relies on hegemony for blockades, while Huawei relies on a painstaking approach for breakthroughs. This is a confrontation between two logics. The US believed money could buy technology but forgot that chips are a painstaking. Tightening the screw. Process. Huawei knew that core technology cannot be bought, so it treated every component as a tough battle. 
the magnetic levitation stage, seemingly a single patent breakthrough, is actually a collective awakening of China's semiconductor supply chain. Where we once lacked parts and technology, Huawei is now leading the effort to fill the gaps. This is what truly alarms the US. The claim that China cannot build high-end chips is being severely crushed underfoot. Next, the AI chip that has made the US uneasy. Its disruptive nature is best weighed against NVIDIA. NVIDIA's CUDA ecosystem dominates the global AI chip market. It's like locking developers inside your own yard, forcing them to pay a protection fee for water and electricity. Huawei's new chip, with its indigenous neural network architecture and can computing framework, achieved 70% compatibility with NVIDIA's CUDA code. This means developers who used to work with NVIDIA chips can use Huawei's without significant code modification, immediately tearing open NVIDIA's ecosystem wall. The data is more persuasive. Huawei Cloud Supernode, built with 384 Ascend chips, achieves 300 PFLOPs of computing power, double that of an equivalent NVIDIA system. In the intelligent driving sector, NVIDIA's solution costs hundreds of thousands, whereas Huawei's chip not only boosts performance by 40%, but also lowers the cost of the intelligent driving system. Car makers like BYD and ArcFox are scrambling to place orders, and the number of vehicles equipped with the ADS system on Harmony OS Smart Cockpit is expected to exceed 500,000 units this year. The U.S. export restrictions have ironically accelerated Huawei's substitution efforts, with Huawei's AI chip market share growing threefold in 2024. What truly subverts conventional wisdom is never the technology itself, but the courage to break monopolies. The U.S. consistently uses technological hegemony as a weapon, but it inadvertently forced Huawei to become an all-rounder. This AI chip is more than a 40% performance boost. It's China's declaration of a breakthrough. In the AI field, you monopolize the ecosystem, and I will build my own. You restrict exports, and I will build something cheaper and better. When Huawei chips are installed in BYD cars, and when domestic AI servers enter enterprises, the U.S. technological blockade becomes a joke. This is the hardest won confidence of independent innovation. Compared to the difficulties faced by the European and American chip industries, Huawei's breakthrough is even more valuable. Europe's Chip Act allocated 43 billion euros, aiming for 20% of global chip production by 2030. But by 2025, capacity has only reached 8%, and key equipment must still be bought from the US. The US situation is even worse. The $52.7 billion in subsidies from the Chips Act was taken by Intel and TSMC to build factories, but production remains slow because they lack China's rare earth materials lack China's market, and critically, lack in hard bone chewing enterprise like Huawei. In contrast, in China, immediately following Huawei's patent disclosure, SMIC announced capacity expansion, Guang Optics Exposure System entered the assembly phase, and the Chinese Academy of Sciences also achieved breakthroughs in EUV light source technology. The entire industry chain is rotating like activated gears. Meanwhile, ASML is nervous. Previously, when they monopolized EUV, they were arrogant. Now, they've proactively stated they will continue to supply China because they know that continued restriction will only lead to China no longer needing to buy their equipment.